Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is the first video in a series that I'm hoping to make. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while, uh, looking at Touch Designer as a game engine. Uh, and then also, kind of a, on a bigger picture than that, um, how to scale up to an enormous project uh, from, you know, normally in most tutorials, most things, uh, you know, I might do in a workshop or something. Uh, tend to be fairly compact uh, things where you, you kind of show one technique or, or two techniques. Uh, and so I want to show an example of an actual project. Um, initially, I made this for in, in, in the art context for gallery installation and then also for performance uh, and then also became a, a music album um, and then show an actual big project and how I've like solutions that I've actually come up with to structure a really big project and uh, how to keep everything optimized and communicating and um, try to harness all of the crazy complexity that's going all over the place, uh, especially when you're trying to do something kind of kind of like a, a game engine um, is made to do. So, um, you know, this video is going to be kind of like a table of contents. I'll give a little overview of the project and then uh, mention briefly what what all of these um, kind of this is the, the template uh, for the piece, all the different containers. Uh, and we can see, just to get a glance of how big this is, um, you can see there's over 6,000 operators in this entire tow file, which is a lot. Um, if you haven't used the op find uh, dat before, it's kind of nice. If you just uncheck this limit max depth, it will show you all the operators and you can then search in it in various ways, which is nice. Uh, and then my constant here, I'm just getting the number of rows. So that's telling me how many operators there are. Uh, so that's a lot. Uh, and, you know, the one of the, the main um, kind of cool things set up here is I've got this talking to, um, I'm using this Xbox controller. Uh, and we can see as I, you know, one of the basic mechanics here, I wanted to kind of take the mechanics of a typical games, uh, but then try to turn it into more of a, a venue for sound art or ambient music. Um, the way these controllers are working, I've got simple move and then look, uh, and then also hover up and hover down. So I was kind of thinking of it more like a, a drone copter almost. Um, so throughout, I've got audio effects that are triggered d depending on zones. Um, there's these little signs spread around. So if I click A, and then this is an example for a performance version. Um, we can then incorporate some uh, physical interaction. So having like a rock, place it on a, a force sensitive resistor uh, via Arduino. Uh, so in the real world, someone could put a rock on this square and then that gets triggered. Uh, and then that triggers Sonic and other behaviors in the environment. So it's kind of about just flying and exploring. Um, so some of the things that we'll talk about in this series, actually, let me speed up my thing. So also incorporating a menu. So all these settings actually play a role. I'm gonna make myself faster. So we'll just fly through here a little bit. Uh, these were scans made um, with an app called 3D Scanner app. Uh, this is it's been a few years ago actually since I made these scans, uh, hiking through the Grand Canyon. They were then pieced together. So we get to this more of a quiet spot here. Okay. Uh, so some of the things we'll talk about. Um, this one here, audio. Uh, so what I have happening, I've got different families of sounds and this DAT table functioning like a, uh, having all the presets for depending on what zone I'm in, uh, how loud are each of these families of sounds. Uh, some of these, like the drone copter, uh, I've got different effects on the drone copter. So how, depending on how fast I'm moving, that'll be modulated in various ways. Uh, just within touch. Uh, things like 
oops, do sign click events. Let's do this. So um, for that first sound, when, when the sign was clicked, that triggered this sound. And so I've got a little bit of a system of fading in and then fading out other sounds, depending on the current zone. Um, so we'll, we'll dive into audio. I've got this kind of mixer set up here. Uh, so this is the different families of sounds that are it's grabbing um, gain values from this table here. Um, the zone tracking, so the, the audio is, is kind of depending on these events and also what zone we're in. You can see right now we're in zone B. Um, another video will go through this system of um, essentially I have created milestones throughout the entire environment with um, TXTYTZ and RXRY values. I think there's about 236 total, 235. Um, so depending on how close we are to one of these milestones, I can tell what zone I'm in uh, by doing a, uh, a distance, um, distance algorithm between my camera position and the positions of these milestones. So that's how I'm tracking zone. So uh, there's a video that will talk about that. Um, getting the input in to begin with. Um, joystick chop. So I'm, I'm cheating right now. So this controller can only be used with a PC. I'm recording on a Mac right now. Um, but secretly, this is actually an OSCN because I've got my PC laptop over there. Uh, that's actually getting the Xbox controller input. Um, normally, I would just be running this on a PC and using this joystick chop uh, to be getting all of this good data. So you can see different axes, rotations, buttons uh, all come in on the joystick chop. Uh, so that's a really great um, operator. Uh, and then once we, and actually, I, I also made the capability if I'm somewhere I don't have my controller, I can click keyboard and use the, the keyboard to move around. So I just made this graphic uh, to help move with the keyboard. Um, and then this other one, this will be another video, first person camera location control. Uh, so this is really where, this is the guts of how we're actually navigating the environment. Um, getting in, so this is just selecting all of my, uh, my joystick data and parsing that in various ways. And one of the cool, kind of the, the most mathy of anything I've really done in these videos. Actually, let me, I don't really need that. OK, so let's get rid of that. Um, is this, uh, these, these functions for determining your, it's kind of, making the world coordinates and camera coordinates collaborate. <laughs> it's, it's kind of transposing world coordinates onto uh, camera coordinates. Uh, so if you imagine I want to go straight, but if my camera is rotated a certain way, then that's not exactly like in the Z axis, right? It's somewhere in between like the Z and the X. So there's uh, some trigonometry to be done to figure out based on your angle of rotation. Um, how to actually move in a, in a kind of local way according to where the camera is pointing. So, and that, that's purely from a Stack Overflow post from, from several years ago that I applied using these function chops. Uh, so we'll get more into that. Um, and then some of these I'll also share when, when I actually get around to, to doing the videos. Um, I'll publish these talks uh, so the community can grab this and play with it also. Um, another big one is state manager. Um, it's actually not so many things happening here, but uh, especially in a, in a game environment, or you can imagine um, an interactive installation environment that, that we might be working in. Um, you know, there's the need to keep track of certain states of your entire kind of uh, system, your entire universe. Um, and so with this, you know, certain states such as, so sign one has been clicked, which we did, sign two and, and three has, have not been clicked yet. So the, the world kind of changes depending on how many signs have you clicked. Um, I've got this other thing called map world and different phases within that, this kind of at the end of the, the game. Um, and so everything kind of changes depending on what map world phase you're in. 
So this state manager keeps track of all those different things, um, certain times, like if uh, if we're in certain states, like a, a, I have a cinematic sequence sometimes, I don't want to be able to hit the button for the menu, let's say. Um, so if the state is saying we're in a cinematic, disable all of the controls, so this, this type of thing. So I found that the, having the state manager control, uh, container I should say, uh, has been really helpful. Um, another video will be about master time. Uh, so this, I mean, this is pretty pretty easy, but we'll, we'll cover it in a little more detail later. Um, for long-term installations, um, you can't count on our trusty friend, which is absolute time dot seconds. Uh, why not? Because if this was on for a certain length of time, uh, which I think is about, a, I've never actually tested this before, but just from reading online, about a week or so, um, this number is going to get so big that it could cause everything to crash. Uh, so we, we don't want to, to cause this you know un, uncomputable number. Therefore, uh, we use a clock, uh, which gets the actual time, and then I'm restarting. So this speed is just counting from when I started, but then the speed gets reset at midnight uh, every every day. So this kind of resets the what what would be an absolute time that seconds for us, so we never get to that uh, super high value. Um, and then just this main thing is this sprawling crazy thing. Uh, we can talk about the use of these, you know, inputting these scans. So I've got five different scans for my landscape, actually quite long. Um, and then how to manipulate those. Um, some other tricks with all the texture maps I created here. I, I got a system here where um, I can choose between, uh, depending on what system I'm on, what resolution of textures I want to use. So 8K, obviously, if I'm on a really powerful machine. Uh, if I'm on a not so powerful machine, I can do you know, lower resolution textures, uh, which is a nice thing to have. Um, so right now, I haven't touched the joystick for a while. So I went into sleep mode. You can see my light is off now. And let me turn this back here so we can see. So now if I touch any controller, I just became awake and my light turned back on. So a lot of little tricks like that. Um, so maybe that's that's a decent overview. There's just a lot going on. We can talk about um, the use of, I've got lots of uses of render passes. Um, I'm grabbing from my main render top, um, but then the idea of this depth buffer, I'm using this a lot for lots of, of different render passes. So I've got one main render top and lots of render passes uh, and maintaining depth, which you'll see maybe right here. An example, uh, I've got a moon hiding here. Actually, let me just do this. Let me do view. Actually, yeah, maybe that's not good. I'll just keep that hidden down there. So as I move around this cliff here, maybe get back a little bit slower. It's also a new zone is going to be triggered here. I think I'll go into zone D. And that triggers some new audio files to play. And there's a moon hiding over there. So we can kind of see at a glance what's happening. So this render pass top is only rendering something that's in a moon container. So it's only rendering the, the moon geometry. Um, but I'm grabbing the depth from the original render which is enabling this to be um, kind of masked by the terrain in front of it. So lots of cool tricks that we can do with that. Um, another little trick. This happened from early usability tests with my students, uh, where it's a little, little bit hard to control and 
they couldn't really understand where they were going. So if you get lost and you're just pointed out into space, um, there's a little trick here. Where, like, where am I doing that? I'm analyzing. Here we go. So I'm analyzing. If there's no ground um, here, then this converts to a zero, and that triggers this UI message to pop up. Um, if I turn back around, and we actually see some some land that shows up there. So this analyze uh, creates a higher number. So let me do that again. And then if I hit Y, that takes me back to the nearest milestone, uh, which we'll talk about in the zone tracking. So yeah, let's let's I'll, let's just play through a little bit, and after that, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.